Good morning, everybody, and a happy new year to you all. And welcome to those of you who are joining us online as well. I hope you've all had good celebrations of the new year, and we look forward to this new year with probably all sorts of emotions. The, um, today, we are going to be looking at the passage to, with the Epiphany in mind, the uh, revelation of God incarnate to the Gentiles, to the Magi. But an alternate gospel reading for today, because of course Epiphany actually is on January the 6th, is from John chapter 1. And there's a portion there where there are two disciples with John the Baptist, disciples of John the Baptist. Um, and as they see Jesus walking by, John the Baptist says, look, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples of John the Baptist immediately start to follow Jesus, who turns around and says to them, what are you looking for? So as we just, this beginning of this service, just ask yourself that question. What are you looking for this morning and in this coming year? This was the moment when before turned into after. And the future's uninvented timekeepers presented arms. This was the moment when nothing happened. Only dull peace sprawled boringly over the earth. This was the moment when even energetic Romans could find nothing better to do than counting heads in remote provinces. And this was the moment when a few farm workers and three members of an obscure Persian sect walked haphazard by starlight straight into the kingdom of God. Poem written by U.A. Hanthorpe, the Quaker, who would write a poem each year at Christmas and usually had some sort of humorous element to it. This was the moment when a few farm workers and three members of an obscure Persian sect walked haphazard by starlight straight into the kingdom of God. We meet in the name of God, creator of the universe, source of true humanity, father and mother of all. Amen. We meet in the name of Jesus, word made flesh, saviour of fallen humanity, lover of all. We meet in the name of the Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, midwife of new humanity, inspirer of all. Amen. Come then, eternal God, be present here, be friend us here, renew us here. In a time of quiet, as we bring to mind those areas in our lives that perhaps we want renewing, desire God's transforming power to renew them. The reading is from Matthew chapter 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Wise men came from the east, came to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? 
or we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The invitation this morning is to consider this narrative of the major, the wise men, with no idea how many there are, there are. But their journey, and compare it to perhaps what could be our journey into the next year, into this coming year. 2022. I am wondering what it is that these magi were expecting to find. Okay, the birth of a king, the king of the Jews. But I wonder what exactly they were expecting of this child, or even if they thought it would be this child would have grown up. I wonder what it was that they were looking for. Whatever it was, it was sufficient for them to take up the huge responsibility of this long journey, traditionally from Persia through to Israel, to Palestine. And it struck me as I was reading this passage, the various things, people, that they used to help them find their way. They were wise men from the east, travelling to Jerusalem. And they made that journey because they had observed a star. These wise men were astrologers. Note, astrologers, not astronomers. I remember saying that once in a service and afterwards a lady came up to me and said, I'm sorry, Joy, you've got that wrong. There is no way God would use people who were astrologers. But they were. So they used the stars is their impetus. They travelled to Jerusalem because somehow the stars had told them, had shown them that it was the king of the Jews, so go to Jerusalem, the capital. And there they inquire of King Herod. And there they tell him 
we've observed the star. And we have this narrative of where Herod is obviously feeling threatened by this other king of the Jews, inquires of the chief priests and scribes who turn to their scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures. And it seems from those scriptures, Herod then relays to these wise men where they should go. And the wise men trust the Hebrew scriptures. They are not Hebrews, they are Persians. But moving from observing a star, astrology, to scriptures that are not part of their own religion. And we read that when they heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star, they had seen it is rising until it stopped over the place where the child was, Bethlehem. Herod had told them to go to Bethlehem. So they used their everyday knowledge. They listened to people of other faiths. They went to another person of authority in good faith to show them the way and eventually they found what they were looking for. On entering the house they saw the child with Mary his mother and how did they respond? They knelt down and paid him homage. Thinking back over the last year, I wonder what sources of help you drew on to help you as you moved through 2021. I wonder what unexpected help came from a source perhaps you never ever expected. As we move into 2022, Hear that voice of Jesus asking, as they ask those two disciples of John the Baptist, what are you looking for? And where are you going to go to actually find what you are looking for? What help do you require? We read those two disciples just followed Jesus. Sounds so easy, doesn't it? But what does following Jesus mean for you and me this coming year? Where will you find Jesus in your everyday, as the astrologers did? Perhaps going to people of authority, some of which you may feel cannot be really uh, trusted, but even with King Herod, God used him. It may be from people, from cultures and religions that normally you would not have, not mix with, but to have that open ear to allow the Spirit to speak to you. So what signs will you trust this year? Which people will you listen to this year? Where will you go for direction this year? And how will we discern whether what we are finding out is actually leading us to what we're looking for? And how do we discern when to put that information to one side? And we recognize, realize this again, see this again in this story, in this narrative. Having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they 
they left for their own country by another road. They actually trusted their instinct through a dream to move away from the direction they might have originally travelled in. So it's okay to say no. I'll leave that to one side. It's okay to say, I'm not sure I trust that. I need to leave that for the time being. Which is why I love, and it's that last couplet in that poem, to walk haphazard by starlight, straight into the kingdom of God. I think if we were really honest, most of our journeys are haphazard. But how wonderful that even a haphazard journey can bring us straight into the kingdom of God. What are you looking for in Jesus this year? How will you go about that? How will you discern what is helpful and what is not helpful? There's no indication in the scriptures that we read in that story how long the wise men stayed with Jesus. I suspect it wasn't just that in and out. But in the <clears throat> narrative that I referred to earlier about the two disciples who were looking for Jesus and followed him, we read that they went to where he resided and remained there for the day. And in that discerning as to what we have been taught, what we've found, what we're wondering, considering, discerning takes time. And I do think there's something there about you discover something about Jesus and you remain with it for some time. Don't dismiss out of hand. Don't accept completely utterly at face value. So I think there is something that we can learn in this coming year. Where are those places where we can remain with what we've heard? To allow it to distill down and allow the Spirit of God to convince us one way or another. And that, of course, is one reason why we're is here. It's a place where people can come and remain with what they've heard or with what they're seeking or with what they're really struggling with. To remain and to trust that 
the Spirit will allow us to find what we are seeking. Just as I believe the Spirit of God was working with these wise men from another religion. And for some, for many, this remaining round a table, table of bread and wine, allows the incarnation of Jesus to sink in. The reason why God revealed him or herself through Jesus. We are reminded through bread and wine what that was all about for us. So heaven is here and earth and the space is thin between them. Distance may divide but God's promise unites those bounded by time those blessed by eternity. Let heaven and earth be glad. Let the whole earth cry in glory. Heaven is here and earth, and the church above and below is one. All the saints from far back are here, and those who left us not long ago. Only sight prevents us from seeing them. Let heaven and earth be glad. Let the whole earth cry in glory. Heaven is here and earth, and the God who made them is present. The Lamb glorious on the throne sits beside us. The Spirit of God makes her resting place among us. God inhales the breath of our prayers and spreads a table before us. I'd like to just pause at this moment for us to bring in our prayers all those who are travelling for whatever reason. For some it is to find new things, to search out, to get a better life. For some it is because of their work. For some it is people who are travelling to see family, particularly this time. So let's just, in the quiet, remember all these travellers, physical travellers, today, in our prayers. And I'll just name each one, each category, and then pause. So Lord, we bring before you all of those who are travelling today. We pray for those who it is part of their culture to travel. So we pray for all the Roma communities around out the world and in this city of Sheffield. We pray for those who seek refuge from war from famine, for those who just want to cross over a border from one country to another temporarily before they can return, and for those who seek asylum permanently. We pray for those who are travelling because that is their work, for heavy goods vehicle truck drivers. the drivers of public transport, those who drive as part of the emergency services, and for those who drive deliver goods to our homes, people we have relied on so much in these last few months. Not just the drivers, but the cyclists as well. Those food delivery people from Just Eat, Deliveroo, whose working conditions are not good. And 
we pray for those who are travelling to and from visiting families at this time of year in particular. And for all of these people, we pray for their protection. But we pray also that in their travelling, they will see signs of you, drawing them closer to you. <coughs> so Holy Spirit, guide these individual travellers that you know by name, we don't. Guide us, your people, into truth. Warn us, your people, of danger. Guard us and guide us in our quest for truth and help us to show in our lives faithfulness and gentleness. God inhales the breath of our prayers and spreads a table for us. Let heaven and earth be glad. Let the whole earth cry. Lord, you have gathered us together. Make us one in you, one in heart and mind, one in thought and deed, to serve you and to do your will. Lord, we offer ourselves to you as we offer this bread and wine. As the grain is gathered from the fields to make one loaf, and as the grapes are gathered from the hillsides to make one wine, May we be one in you. Among friends, gathered round a table, Jesus took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it and said, This is my body, given for you. Let's say together, Be with us, Lord, in the breaking, in the breaking of the bread, in the breaking of our lives. In the breaking of our hearts, in the breaking of our hopes, be with us, Lord, in the breaking, for you alone can make us whole. We'll say the next prayer when we eat bread together. At the end of supper, he took the cup and gave him thanks. He gave it to them and said, This cup is the new relationship with God, sealed with my blood. Drink it to remember me. Be with us in the outpouring, in the outpouring of the wine, in the outpouring of our hopes, in the outpouring of our troubles. Be with us, Lord, in the outpouring, for you alone can make us soul. You, Lord, are the bread of life. Let this bread be life-giving. Let this bread be a means of growth. Let this bread be for our strengthening, that in receiving this bread, we may be one with you. You, Lord, are the true vine. Let this wine be for our refreshment. Let this wine be for our renewal. Let this wine be for our joy, that in receiving this wine, we may be one with you. Lord Jesus Christ, you have put your life in our hands. Now we put ours in yours. Take us, breathe us, remake us. No longer is what we have been as important as what with you we can now become. Amen. I wish you a very spiritually enriching year in 2022. May the light of God illumine your 
path. May Christ, the light of the world, make your life radiant. May the star of the Spirit make the night bright as the day for you. May Father, Son, 